Cities and towns across the nation are experiencing a severe rise in the use of heroin. In the 80s and 90s, the big drugs consisted of crack and cocaine. However, when laws and consequences became more severe and intimidating regarding these drugs, users transferred their addictions to heroin. Our spike in heroin it was probably 15 years ago, I would say, or less. The late 80s or whatever, crack was a big epidemic and everything was thrown towards crack. And harder sentences, more treatment, everything, and it's just kind of like this is what's happening right now. The statistics prove this dramatic rise. Between 2006 and 2013, federal records reveal that first-time users of heroin nearly doubled, going from about 90,000 users to 167,000. What may you ask has fueled this uprising? The war on pain can lend some answers. Over the years, doctors have gotten more and more lenient with their prescriptions, and their prescriptions have only been getting stronger. After an under-treatment for pain was brought up by medical officials across the country, Congress dubbed the years 2001 to 2010 the decade of pain control and research. During this time, physicians focused on the prescription drugs that are now hooking innocent people who initially had no intentions whatsoever in becoming addicted. With the, the war on pain, that, that the medical community really went after pain management. That's everybody, nobody should suffer. And that's really over the last is it 20 or 30 years maybe, we've really tried to keep people out of pain. That has filled people's medicine chests with prescription painkillers. With prescription laws changing, more people are becoming addicted to their strong painkiller due to the rather large amount that they are prescribed. See, the typical story is um, a person has maybe legitimate pain um, or they had an operation um, and are prescribed Percocet, um, Oxycontin, Vicodin, um, and maybe they only need two or three, but they're given 30. Um, and from that, a dependence on the opiate develops. Physicians essentially get people addicted with an unnecessary amount of painkillers and eventually cut their patients off. With no legal access to pills, along with not enough money to buy these expensive pills, heroin offers a more affordable, more accessible alternative to their developed addictions. I was completely cut off from prescriptions, so I ended up starting to buy Oxycontin on the street. And um, that was probably, gosh, I did that for quite a few months. And then a friend of mine said, um, why don't you try this? And she had heroin. And I said, okay. So I tried it. And then, you know, tried it a couple more times, a couple more times after that. And then pretty soon I was just buying heroin. And, um... Along with being one of the most cost efficient drugs out there, it is also one of the most populous drugs. The copious amounts of it make it more available and more easy to acquire. I think it's become easier just because of how many people are using it and how much uh, the demand is. With more amounts of heroin available and easier accessibility, it's evident that prices went down, thus further influencing more people to substitute heroin for their addiction. It depends on how much you're paying for it. It ranges your prices sometimes $4 a bag to $6 a bag, depends where you are. Back in the 90s, it was $20 a bag. So. You get down and uh, you go to Hartford, you go up to uh, New York, and you pay $4 a bag, or even New Britain, and six. And on the water breaks around that, six to $8, so it's all that. It's very cheap. This rise in heroin has tremendous effects on people physically, mentally, and domestically. The more people that try heroin, the more people that eventually need to get clean and experience horrific withdrawals. Well, with opiates, you get sick. You get extremely sick when you stop taking them. You get what feels like the worst flu you could ever have. Um, you, you have restless leg syndrome, your stomach is upset, you sweat, you're cold, you have the chills. It's the worst, worst thing to go through. Addiction can also play some mental games with you, making you feel as if there's no other way to be happy other than getting a fix from heroin. The reason heroin is such a dangerous drug is because it's the one drug for which humans have natural receptor sites. Even though I might not have the physical part of addiction anymore, I still have the mental. 
These mental and physical impacts on the addict show a direct correlation with the domestic impact on one's family. Watching a family member or someone that you love and care about so much suffer with an addiction is one of the hardest things that anyone could possibly do. The family impact may just be one of the most important outcomes of addiction, of course behind the actual addiction itself. From watching their parents suffer with addiction, children are extremely vulnerable to this family impact. This impact could have a positive effect on them in the sense that they might never go near drugs due to being scared, or they could inherit addiction from their parent and thus follow in their footsteps. And it's even more horrifying watching your kids go through it because you know that there's not really a lot you can do. The spouse is also heavily impacted by the other's addiction to heroin in that 7.3% of all divorces are the result of some sort of substance abuse. I discovered my ex-wife using heroin in our home. Um, from that, it turned into discovering evidence of drug use in our home almost on a daily basis. So, that was 2009, it's now 2016. So we've been dealing with it as a family um, on and off, sometimes actively, sometimes not actively, um, as a family for going on like six or seven years now. Not only does this put a financial burden on the victims and families of this drug, but also taxpayers' wallets. President Obama recently proposed a $1.1 billion budget for new funding to address the prescription opioid abuse and heroin use. Recently, Connecticut was awarded over $2.5 million in federal funds to expand substance abuse treatment in health centers. Fighting this drug is expensive money-wise as well as life-wise. With this uprise in the use of heroin with the known mental, physical, and domestic effects on the addict and everyone around them, this huge problem needs to be recognized as an epidemic. But most importantly, this isn't just a problem in our cities. The problem is everywhere and it needs to be solved. That depiction of somebody who's a heroin addict, somebody sitting on a street corner with a needle hanging out of their arm, that's not who heroin addicts are now. You know, they are normal people like me who got, you know, in a bad situation.